Good uh, evening. Uh, this is Marshall. Uh, we're with Wayne Mission, my wife Rebecca, and we are here. We're in wonderful Illinois. Uh, Illinois depends on um, how you say it. I don't Illinois. think anyone says Illinois. Illinois, Illinois. Um, I, somebody they say Illinois. I thought, well, can I say it or not? But Illinois. <laughs> anyway, we are here. Uh, we came up here uh, just having fun, ministry up here, and we're in a friend's house. Absolutely beautiful home. I wish I could take a tour in. It's absolutely beautiful. We're honored to be up here, hanging out with our wonderful friends. And um, it's a little cold right now, though. Uh, it's a little icy out, so we're supposed to leave tomorrow, go to Kentucky and go minister. And so we'll see if we get out of the driveway. It's kind of a hilly, up the hill drive, and it's icy out. So uh, it's supposed to be like 20, 27, 25 degrees, 20 degrees. Really cold tonight, and so it's been raining all day long. So it'll be fun slipping and sliding all over the place. But anyway, so here we are, and I told you in my last video, we're going to start talking about Costa Rica and what God's called us to do what he wants to do and, and how we're supposed to go there and some Wi-Fi I'm going to share about that. Because when we get out there, we feel like it's time to go there. We feel like God wants us to go there and so we hope it's very soon. And so we are, we, my last video, if you didn't watch it, go watch about partnering, partnering with us, about what it means when you partner with somebody, what it means the partnership you get out of it. I encourage you, go read Mark 10 and Matthew 10 and see what God says there about how he promises great things and you can trust in his word. And so today we're going to talk about Costa Rica. And uh, everything we're doing down there, what, what we've seen done. And uh, we might have tests of our kids coming up here in the next video. might share some of the things that they have seen God do in their lives as well. Because we've seen God do many things through us. Uh, in us and through us and around us and all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, um, so do you have, um, what's one of your most favorite stories over the last three years that you've seen God do something? Because uh, that's one thing we're going to do in Costa Rica. I said that in my last video, we're talking about partnering. And we're going to show people how to walk one with God. And we get better and better all the time. And so what's something maybe you have seen? Something that you've... Um... Well, that's not fair. I know. Surprise, no, surprise. Not... No, but I mean, it's not fair because it would be what's going on right now. What's going on right now? Well, some of you know, if you get our newsletter, that, um, that I have been um, attacked by the enemy over the last, well, really eight years, but specifically three years. And... Specifically, um, three months. So. Well, yes, specifically three years, and then the last since November. Right. And so, um, so that's like, yeah, and um, and so, I think that the greatest thing I've seen is God healing me of some inner things mm -hmm. um, that have allowed me to realize who I am in Christ, which has allowed me to receive. Walking and healing, and mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure what that's fine. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry. We've got 21 minutes left. <laughs> got a timer down here. Okay, go for it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to drink coffee. We'll be back in about okay. 20 minutes. Okay. Um, no, I'm just, I'm so thankful that that I have not given up. Because it's easy to give up. It's easy to give up when you feel like junk. It's easy to give up when you're tired. It's easy to give up when you've felt the way I've felt for the last definitely three months, if not three years. And um, my my old my younger kids have not known the same mom as my older kids. Sadly, they did when they were little, but to remember that now they they haven't. But I praise God that now my my boys have a funny thing. They say, "Mom, we think you're so cool because you can you can ride a bike." And I'm like, oh, do I seem that old? Um, but now they are excited. Mom, are you going to play basketball with us again? And actually play and, and all that stuff because because I didn't feel like that before. And so, but it, it all comes in line with being in line with the word and making sure that you're receiving that, not just telling your body that. It, that has nothing to do with it. It does. You have to do that. But your mind has to be renewed. And if your mind is not renewed... Right. And I just interrupt her. I just wrote a book on that. It'll be out. I told you about her soon. I'm trying to finish it right now. About, He's got a slow editor. Yeah. But not perverting the gospel of how God wants to heal everybody. We've seen that. We've seen healings throughout our whole ministry. But how God wants to heal everybody. And it's kind of interesting. I saw this. Um, I think I saw it said in one of my videos. But um, in my book, I talk about it. I said that, that uh, there's something that hinders people from receiving all that God has for them. And in my book, I say that. 
Well, then I was talking to a friend of mine, Steve Castle, up here. Now, I'm not supposed to say his name on YouTube because they, like, they don't like Steve. But anyway, but uh, I was talking to him about this, about, about healing. That's why we came up here. I was talking to him about healing. And, and I was talking about my wife, different things. And he, and he said the same thing I said. Sometimes there's a hindrance there to receiving the Holy Spirit, receiving from God. And I put it in my book six months ago. Um, he said it to me a month ago. Well, then I'll. Yes, said it to me. Yes, said you two weeks, so it's kind of funny. She and it was hard to take. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Who wants to hear that? Nobody does. But anyway, and then uh, we'll get to what she saw, what, what God spoke to her. But then Jesse Duplantis said it in one of his podcasts on the way up here. I, I felt Holy Spirit keep telling me, listen to Jesse. So I put Jesse Duplantis on, and he said the same thing. He goes, God will share. God will show him something about somebody he's praying for in, in particular, and not always to share with them, but how to minister to them. You've got to know when to say it and when to hold it. And so, um, and so, and then I just got through reading uh, Norbert Hayes' book, uh, his, his, uh, his um, Legacy of Faith series that Harrison House put out. And on the back of that book, the, the, does his uh, How to Live Not Die sermon. In that sermon, he said the same thing. Sometimes there's a hindrance there for people receiving it. They've got to get a foundation of God in their life. And in my book, I talk about that, why the Jews could be so healed so easily, it seems like, how they could get they could get at everything from Jesus, except for the ones who knew him as a child. And the, when he went back to his hometown, those that knew Jesus as a child didn't receive from him because they knew who he was. Well, I saw he was a kid. You can't be the Messiah. But those that, that even had an inkling he was the Messiah knew what the Messiah was bringing to them. I have a book coming out that as well soon, real soon. But that's the other issue. You've got to know who Jesus is. When you know who he is, you get everything from him. But sometimes a blockage there. There's something that stops you from receiving all that God wants you to have. And we all can have it. If you're not receiving healing, financial blessings, joy, peace, prosperity, all the things that, that God promised you in his word, if you're not seeing it, then don't get mad at God. And don't even get mad at yourself. Go to God and say, God, what's stopping me? That's all I had to do. Because one day, Marshall, this was... Um, I'm, not always, I'm not always super nice. Well, it, was, it wasn't. You were pretty nice this time. In November when I did yeah, that. But, yeah. But you we're sitting in the car. Do you remember <laughs> this? You want to drink water? <laughs> Talking ahead. too much? We're sitting in the car, and, uh, and she wasn't feeling the best. And I said, why, why, um, why are you sick? <laughs> he said, why are you still sick? Why are you not receiving your healing? And I bowed up. And I said, you got to be kidding me. You don't understand what I'm going through. Blah, 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 right? Right. And, um, but if he had not challenged me, um, I, am, I am one of those that doesn't just get mad and stay mad and do nothing about it. I was mad at him, but it spurred me on, which you're supposed to spur one another on to good works, right? Spurred me on to go ask God, God, is there something that I'm doing or missing or not doing that is causing me to not receive healing and i just asked him that simple i closed my eyes i got by myself closed my eyes asked him that question and immediately i heard worthy and that meant that i felt i was unworthy and so god was telling me i am worthy i am so worthy to receive god's healing but somewhere in the midst of my past or um somewhere something that i learned in church or whatever that i was holding on to um and it's, it's hurt it doesn't or, right and sometimes you might not know sometimes you do know it or misunderstanding or mis scripture whatever it is well, and but that is that is something that she had something happened to her that made her think i'm not worthy of it whatever it is but it doesn't matter what it was but something caused her to think i'm not worthy and i didn't know what it was yet god didn't show me what it was and we came up here and got showed her, and then she went to prayer at Steve's church, and she got ministered to by a lady there, and got set free of it. But then, but then also with me, real quick, like um, God showed me this two years ago, how I had to to trust with Him. I didn't trust Him enough. I'm like, I'm following you. I'm going to trust you enough. And so there's an issue there of not receiving everything from God, and it comes down to what's stopping. It's called false belief. What's stopping you right. from receiving from the Holy Spirit? And I had a trust issue. And God brought it back to me when I was in, um, it's a funny story. I'm going to tell you my whole story quick, like here. Um, I'll share about myself. I don't care. This is a big deal to me. But when I was um, in the third and fourth grade, went to kids camp. 
if you're with the kids camp, Christian camp, you know what it's like, you go there Monday night, you scout the girls out. I mean, I'm in third grade, so whatever, eight, nine years old, something like that. Whatever, whatever, how old am I? Eight, nine, ten. And I go there and you check out the girls, you like the girls, you ask the girl to date her the second day, third day you're dating, which what are you doing at camp? You're just, you're like, hey, she's my girl. And then the fourth day she breaks up with you because she goes forward for prayer and she's crying at the altar and you're not the one for her. And I always got broken at that. I said, I'm never going to give a good looking girl. Never somebody awesome, somebody amazing. And then uh, fast forward a few weeks later, I think I might have said this before, but a, few, few, uh, a month or later, I went to a friend's place, uh, Jeff out there in, um, I can say his last name right now, but out in Maryland, went to his place and we hung out with him. And he talked about false belief and I came and sat quietly in front of God for about 45 minutes and sat there quietly and God spoke to me, don't trust me enough. And he brought back all these memories from a childhood of having these memories of I'm not, I can't trust God because I'm not going to get some hot girl. And I got a hot girl, I got an awesome woman of God. I'm amazing. I'm very blessed to have her in my life. I got the best little woman in the world in my eyes, in my eyes. And so, um, so anyway, and so God had worked that in me. So there is something from yesterday, last week, a parent, a child, um, a teacher, anybody, an uncle, somebody said, did, acted, portrayed God, portrayed a father to you, something hindering you from receiving all that God wants you to receive. And so that me with trust, Rebecca was worthy. And there's always something there. And when you get it, all of a sudden, you get victory because you realize, wait a minute. And when God spoke to me, same thing with you, I'm sure. When God spoke to me about trust, he didn't come beat me up. He didn't say, you don't trust me. He was like, he was like man, I love, he, I felt God come sit next to me, put his heart around me, so he don't trust me enough. And it's the coolest feeling because he doesn't beat you up. If you go to him, he's not, well, I'm not going to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. He loves you. Well, and so, and little by little. He's been trying to tell me what it was. Yeah. Because I look at October. You're right. And we were at Don and Jeff's house. And I could, oh, I this is awesome. That yeah, song. share this. Share that. Well, I think I did. We're going to talk about Coast Street some other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is awesome. But I couldn't sing um, that song from the 90s. Right. Um, about how much God loves us. You could um, tell him. I could tell him all day long, God, I love you. You're so great. You're, I love you so much. I pour out my love to you. Whatever it was. And, but then to think about that God really loved me the same way I was trying to, to talk to him about love, I couldn't fathom because how could he love me? I had all this junk in my life, and I'm so thankful that I let it go, right? Right. I let it go um, so he could move in my heart and in my life. But that day, body. that day, remember, you, you were crying, and you said, I can't say he loves me. And yeah. I remember just, I was like, what can you, what can you say that for? But God is always setting you up for success. Right. He's always working on you. And if you go to him, he'll work on you because he loves you. He wants you to succeed. He wants us to succeed. And until we get set free of all these right. false beliefs, <coughs> we can't see complete victory. We, we can see victory. We can make it happen. We can, we, can, we can twist the world and make it happen and talk to people but, and push oh, it through. much better with Jesus? How much better with God? How, oh, how much better with Jesus? How much better it is when we let Him do it. Then when we get to Coast Street and everything is fulfilled, we're following God's plan for our life, there's freedom, release there, there's no bondage there, there's no, because in Him is complete victory. In Him is complete freedom, complete freedom. There's no, no junk there, and there's no stress in your life. And so, Jesus made me worthy. Yeah. Worthy to receive healing and prosperity right. and love and joy and peace in my life. He made me worthy. And for some reason, I know the reason now, um, but for some reason I was holding on to something that just kept snowballing, telling me I wasn't worthy. And that's not how God thinks about me at all. Mm -mm. When he crucified his son on the cross, he paid for mm -hmm. that in full. And he made us, he made us to be able to be one again. And so all this unworthiness that I was holding on to, whatever I learned it from, whether it was people's words, whether it was bad doctrine, whether it was um, the way I held on to emotions, whatever it was, was the devil trying to lie to me. It was the enemy trying to tell me, you're not worthy. You're not yeah. worthy. And you know what? I am worthy. Why? Because Jesus made me worthy. Amen. So regardless of how I feel, regardless of how it looks, regardless of how my body feels, 
Jesus made me worthy to be healed. And this is cool. So, and so what you don't know is she was swollen up to her lungs, like massively swollen, um, up till about a month ago, two months ago, we're down in Cleveland, Tennessee. A month. And, um, and we yeah. went to the ER. She got drained of everything, took, not drained, but took some, uh, uh, water pills or whatever it is, and drained her water, whatever, lax, what did you call laxative? Lasix. Lasix, sorry, and drained her of water. Um, and then, and then, so, and then we've been fighting it ever since. And so, yes, this morning, yesterday morning, you were walking and, and you saw healing again. I mean, she sees okay. healing every day now. So, yesterday she was hurting again. No, I woke up feeling great. Right. It was yesterday. Sorry. And that's what was so wonderful because I haven't been waking up feeling great. And I got up and I was like, I gotta get up. I gotta get up and pray. And so, that has not been my attitude for the last three years at all. It's like, uh, do I have to get up? Can I just stay in bed? And that is not me at all, which is the way I was when we first got married. Is I right. was the morning person. I was the one that was happy to get up. And so I'm happy to get up. So I had that <laughs> Later. joy. No, so I had that joy back. And this morning, same thing. Same thing. I have that joy back, and it's and it's so real and so pure and so right. godly it's nothing god's right. so good he's he lo awesome he loves me so much and so that like norma he said there's something sometimes that stops you from receiving from god so if you're that's what he said in his book as well so i said in my book if you keep praying and i didn't see this till after but i went to his bible school but i didn't see it till after i wrote my book i read in his book but if if you are praying and you're not seeing a miracle come to pass. Now, sometimes it takes time. Now, I said this before. I don't know why. This wasn't instant with me. No, it's not. But sometimes it takes time for healing. Even Norma Hayes. Norma Hayes was moved in powerfully, powerful ways. He saw many miracles, demons cast out. He saw, I, I, I'm not going to tell you stories that he told us because it was unbelievable. Some of the stories are crazy. You go, that ain't right. But it's really out there. It's kind of fun. He's an awesome, he was an awesome man of God. But he died a few years back, 92, 94, 92. Four years ago. Four years ago. Was he 92 years old? Awesome man of God. But what, what he um, um, what he taught was about the, the, the hindrance there that stops you. But when his daughter, when this is a cool story, when he was praying one night, sitting in his chair, in his living, in his uh, den, and we got to stay in his house for two or three weeks. That was awesome. And uh, just recently. Um, and so when he's sitting in his den, I sat in the same, same den with where he sat, praying for his daughter to get healed. She had growth all over her body. Uh, his own his body, praying for God to get healed. One day, God took him to heaven. Jesus took him to heaven and says, "What are you doing? Why aren't you telling? Why aren't you confessing? Why aren't you telling the, the your daughter's body to be healed? Come to be healed." And Norval said, "What do you mean? What am I doing?" And so he made fun of himself. Well, I don't ask God what he means. <laughs> but anyway, so he came back to his body and he started confessing over his daughter. Now Jesus gave him a vision. He went to heaven. He came back. Don't you think it happened that very second? And as soon as she up, be healed. Well, she wasn't healed. It took 40 days. 40 days. She had growth all over her body, spots all over her body, growth all over her body. And she, <coughs> and she was a teenager. And she went to her bedroom one day and came screaming out of her bedroom 40 days later. Dad, dad, screaming, dad, 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 look at me. Her body's completely brand new, completely healed. It took 40 days. From the point, from the moment of the vision, the fulfillment of the healing took 40 days. So when God sets you free, sometimes if you speak in the word, standing on faith, but you will see the victory. Renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. And he didn't have to renew his mind. I don't, but I, I don't know why it took that long. But don't, don't, don't get mad. Don't get frustrated. Don't get angry. Just say, wait a minute. If today you listen to this and you get this message that we're talking about, me about trust, her about worthy, if you get something like that, you say, wait a minute. What I'm praying for financial blessings. I'm praying for healing. I'm praying for peace in my life. I want to get off these pills for depression. If you're praying for that, then take a moment, go to God, say, God, is there something that I'm believing that's not from you? Because that's it's a false belief. That's what it is. The devil's lying to you, keeping in your head, you're not worthy, you're not, you can't trust me. The list goes, I can't, I'm not gonna I, the list goes on and on. It could be anything, whatever you're facing, but you give it to God and say, God, here I am. Here's what's going on in my life, and I give it to you, and let God set you free. And when he sets you free, you feel freedom. When, 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 I, when, I, when he came down with his arm around me and told me, you don't trust me, I just had this, this peace and joy, and just this, I was crying because all of a sudden he ministered to me. But, I, but I, now I know I can trust him. And it's not always easy, though. Sometimes it's difficult, but I keep going forward. 
And I keep fighting that battle, saying, no, devil, you're a liar. My God says I can trust him. And we've seen him come through many times. We've seen healings, financial blood. We've seen God do so much in our lives because we keep trusting him because we learned this. And that's what we do in Costa Rica. We spent 20 minutes talking about healings, but that's what we're doing tonight. That's what we want to teach them. Because if they're not, that's why they're walking in. We already Defeat. know. We already know. There, God told me in prayer. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's awesome. Um, two, oh my gosh! I forgot about that. Three years ago. Sorry, it's cool. That we were. That I was going to teach them how their <laughs> that word. Their word. <laughs> that word is cool. Oh my gosh! I forgot about that. Do you and remember so, that? Yes. I that remember. is cool. I remember that. And Wasn't so, that a well? What was the well thing? What was yeah, that a well it was thing? A well. We, you had a, didn't you? Didn't again. Kerstin say must have a vision about the well too? Someone else did. I think Kit Kat. Kit Kat said must have a vision about, I'm looking at Kerstin, she's behind the camera. Is it Kit Kat? Go get her. But anyway, uh -huh. um, Kat Trio, Kit Kat, we recall her. But both of you guys had visions around the same month or two about, you had the first year, the second, about a well or something like that. And you said, go, go, what's, tell her what you're going to say. This is cool. I forgot about well, this. That's what God showed me we were going to do in Costa Rica, Costa Rica is teach them their worth in Christ because they don't know it. And so if they don't know their worth in Christ, then they can't live victoriously like I'm living. And so... But you can't give what you don't have. That's right. So here I am. I got it. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're ready. And so well, That's cool. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's awesome. That's why we did this. I don't know why are we... The whole time I'm sitting going, why are we going this way? We're not even talking about Costa Rica, but that's the point of it. The Holy Spirit. The Holy, Holy Spirit. All, he always knows what's going on. But that's the purpose of us going to Costa Rica. The land down there, everything else we have going on, we want to walk through people to get healing of all that. And it can take seconds. It doesn't have to take long. It doesn't have to take weeks on ends. It depends on how. That's where getting away from everybody. When you get away to a spot where no one's around you, mm -hmm. your cell phones don't work, haha, <laughs> nothing works down there, Wi Fi doesn't work. We have Wi Fi at the, at the, at the, at the, at the restaurant area. But the wife and not work anywhere else because we want people to get alone with God, spend time with God, so get they, a hold of God. So they can get immersed in His presence so they can hear Him. Because it can take you, it's a second. Yeah. We, did, we, we preached about finding your, your, um, your false beliefs at a French church there in Dallas at uh, Miguel's, yeah. uh, Miguel Enriquez's church there in Dallas. Uh, what's the name of the church again? Rambling. Diversity Church. Diversity church. Went to his church there and we preached about this. And one of the ladies in the front row, while I'm talking about this, did this in the middle of the service. Yes. She and she 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 got her she got the false belief. She had some blocking for receiving from God. Are you talking about Jen? I don't remember, I wouldn't answer her name. But anyway, and uh, anyway, so anyway, and then she um and then she got healed that morning. She her knees were hurting when she got healed, got in a miracle. And so you it doesn't take this doesn't you not you're not come to Costa Rica to do it. You can do wherever you're at. You can do it right now at home. You sit right there. But we know we're supposed to go to Costa That's what we're doing. To help them to do this. We're doing that with everybody from the world. Whoever yes. that comes down there. And we train people how to do this as well. And go out and do it themselves. Disciple and that's, them to do it themselves. And that's why our mission is called Way Missions. How to walk like Jesus. Yes. You can't walk like Jesus unless you overcome all the doubts of your of the in your life. You have to come that's over right. the doubts. You have to overcome them. You have to overcome. And that only comes from spending time with the Father. Renewing your mind by the Word of God yes. and meditating on the Word of God. Yes. Spend time in worship, meditating on the Word of God. And those two things will get you into God's presence and God will walk you through everything. That's right. And that, that's what we want to do in Costa Rica. So I'm going to take people there. That's, I forgot about that. That's cool. Sorry, I'm back to the dream, the vision thing about the well, about worth. And that's something I start crying. That's so cool. God is so awesome. He knows what we're called to do. He put us together. Holy cow. A lot, we, should, we should do a testimony of that. We should do, a story, we should do a, our story about that, how we met and everything. But God put us together a long time ago because he knew what we needed. He knew we needed each other. He yeah. knew to encourage each other, build each other up. He knew exactly what I wanted in my life. I wanted a hot, sexy babe. Just, can I say it on, online? But anyway, I wanted a hot woman. I can't say it. But anyway, and I got one. And I got an amazing woman who loves God. That's better than anything else. You can be ugly. Uh, not you, but... But you can, you can have an ugly wife, but if she loves Jesus, that's above everything else. And so anyway, so um, anyway, thank you for listening tonight. Um, I encourage you to, uh, to go after God, find out, find out what your false belief is, get a hold of it, and then release it to God. And sometimes it takes time. It took me a month or two, it took my wife a month or two. It doesn't have to, to lay, that one lady, that, that morning she got it. So it, it's various for every person. And it brings such freedom. Yeah, but don't worry about it. Just go to God and say, God, here I am. God, don't, oh, God, show me. Just, God, 
Here I am. And if you keep going to him, he'll walk you through every healing process because he wants to get you there. He, he wants to get you there because he loves you. He wants to bless you. He wants to move in your life. He so keep going after God. So would you pray for everybody quickly? Yes. You can look in the camera and pray. Okay. Just so you know. I'll try to tell you that. Thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. Lord. And I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word and testimony of your goodness that went forth. Father, we love you and praise you. Mm -hmm. We thank you. Father, for what you've done in us, and I thank you for where you're taking us mm -hmm. so we can share it with others and we can be a light to this world, and I just pray that you would um, just continue to use us and heal these people that are listening, Father, let them know, mm -hmm. uh, Father, what, what they need in their lives that can renew them and change them mm -hmm. so they can receive your love, and I just thank you for it, Father, I thank you uh, for leading and guiding us to walk in your way and I thank you for um, all you've done. We love and praise you Lord in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Have, a, have an awesome evening and we'll see you again next time. Thanks again for watching.